Welcome back to the channel, Fish and Freaks. I hope you're ready to jam with me and the Crispy Collector as we go out on this nice calm day and try to catch some fish for the grease. In some upcoming videos, we're gonna be dabbling with the catfish. We're gonna be dabbling with the crappies. I gotta tell you, balgooginsquad.com and using that promo code LFG at checkout. Winter fishing gloves, we got them. When it's cold, you need fishing gloves, flip floppies, exposed fingers, covered fingers, whatever kind of fingers you wanna do. We got them with our new gloves. A few crappie danglers, check out the crappie baits that we got working. Anyway, go check out the plethora of things that we have at GoogingSquad.com. Link down in the description. Before we get going on the water today, I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to my boy, my Colonel, Sander, Colonel Sanders. We had a bonding moment yesterday. And you're thinking, I know, I know, you're, you're thinking dead chicken. There's a dead chicken right here. Yesterday, it was overcast like this. It was getting darker uh, a little faster than normal. That's always cause for concern with the animals. We do uh, live in the woods here, so we've got critters running around. I was eating dinner right there, and I heard squawking just going crazy. I didn't even hesitate. I, I immediately threw the crocs on. So I was looking around, and then I look right over here, and there's a bobcat. Big boy. Big old bobcat. I don't know if it was just the winter weather. He was all puffed up or if he was just jacked up and he, he was ready to get Colonel Sanders, but he had Colonel Sanders in his mouth. This bobcat was so big that Colonel Sanders' feet weren't even touching the ground. Had him by the neck. I, I, I put it into high gear. I started sprinting and then he drops him. He drops Colonel Sanders, takes off into the woods. No tail to tuck, but he, he looked... I mean, I was gonna beat him. I was gonna beat him bad. I didn't know what exactly I was gonna do once I got my hands on it. I wasn't really thinking about that, but I was gonna do something. He is, uh, he's mopey today. He's very mopey. Uh, I haven't seen him this far down in the dumps since his last big fight when we had a bunch of roosters, but he's alive, he's kicking, and we have a mutual respect for each other. He was probably less than five seconds away from being got. Ah, uh, and I saved him, and he saved the hens. So shout out to my, my boy, Colonel Sanders, protecting the flock, still getting them eggs. Now, let's get in the crispy collector, and let's go see what we can do out here on this calm day. All right, fishing freaks, we're at the lake, and it's time to roll out. Me and Crispy riding again. And we're going to try to go after catfish today. I've had a big problem catching bait. It's really cold. If you have any tips on catching winter shad when it is cold, let me know in the comments. We do have a backup option, but it's not gonna be nearly as good as the fresh, oily, delicious shad cuts that you can get from the lake using a cast net. I'm terrible at throwing a cast net. So we've got a couple of noodles on board. We've got a couple of different rods to throw into our, our rod holders back here. I have a drift sock, I have some special weights and we're gonna be utilizing um, a rig that's basically for drifting and we'll go over that here in a little bit. I've never done this with the information that I have now and the tools that I have now, so I'm interested to try it. The water is going to be cold. Uh, since the last time I left Texas, it has been frigid. And this water, I would not be surprised if it's in the low 40s, high 30s, and that is probably gonna move a lot of the bait out into the main creek channel, but we're gonna find out on our new graph system that is on the Crispy Collector. So let's jump in, see what's going on down there. First time running the new system with all the mounts and everything on here, working beautifully. So I like that I can actually tilt this, actually put it where I want to. That'll probably come even more into play when I'm doing scoping. We're sitting at 12.3, let me check something real quick. Turn that on. Let's see, there we go. Now it's pumping out 12 to 30 watts. We're at 88% on our battery. We should see our voltage go up right here. Should stay around 12.7, 12.8. Coming out of our battery that's in this unit. There we go, 12.7. We're gonna rock with that all 
day, baby. Gulls open out here. What are they doing? What are they? What are they attacking? Maybe some shad out there. That's really our, our first objective. We're gonna try to get some real shad, some real life shad with the cast net. I think that's gonna be best for bait. And we're going to look for uh, basically bait on deep flats, maybe around creek channels. And we're going to set out baits and do some drifting on deep water catfish. Gargantuan amount of birds over here. I would imagine that there's some form of bait fish out here. We're in 36 feet of water. Still not seeing any balls of bait yet. It's gotta be something though. I'm seeing some things hugging the bottom. Could be white bass, catfish, carp. They are down there deep. right now guys I am the worst cast net thrower in history not to mention one of my strings on the deal broke so it wasn't opening the best and I can't get it to open the best even with a terrible throw though with the electronics I found uh, just a ton of shad and they just happened to be like only 10 feet down I got so incredibly lucky and we got more bait than we know what to do with look at all these greasy gizzards baby this is the goods right here, the good stuff. Oh, we got a drum in there too. Give them just a little bit of water. Oh, let them go. Look at those babies right there. God. Ah, the water's not really necessary, but I'm just so happy to have them. Best catch I've had in a, in a hot minute with catfish. I can never catch those shad. We got the goods. They're gonna be around bait for sure. Blue cats. They love shad. That's what we're trying to go after, those big blue catfish. And the graph is just lighting up with shad out here in 25, 30 feet of water. And as far as the map goes, I'm kind of on a big main link point and it transitions into sort of a flat and the creek channel uh, runs way out off this bank, but it's a deep flat and deep flat's great. See, look right here, these shad are just kind of glued to the bottom. So we don't have much wind right now, which is great for the crispy collector. It may not be the best for drifting. It says we're literally going zero, <laughs> zero miles an hour. Uh, we're gonna be doing a really slow drift, which may not be bad for 41 degree water. So I'm gonna get these rods rigged up and get some of these shad cut up and put them on here and, and see what we can do. I'm, I'm so happy to have these fresh gizzard shad. I think that's gonna make a huge difference but hopefully we get something big. Hopefully we just get something, man. I love eating blue catfish. They're so delicious. Okay, are you guys ready to see something really wild? I know you are. So this 
is going to be our <laughs> our drifting catfishing rig. I know this looks crazy, but let me walk you through it here. So I've got just a you know a medium heavy bass rod, essentially seven footer. So I went with something kind of more parabolic, 20 pound uh, fluoro on it. And I'm going to a three-way swivel that's got a 50 pound mono leader going down to a, a snake weight, essentially. This is like a drifting weight. And the reason you want this long weight is to kind of come over a brush. It's just less snaggy. Then coming off of uh, the other part of the three-way swivel, I've got this 50 pound mono leader with an old popper that I found. And I slid, I took the hooks off and I just slid that up there. And then I've got a, uh, this is a four aught, I believe, four aught circle hook. So the whole idea with this thing is it's a giant drop shot, essentially. I mean, we are dead calm. This is a, dr a day that you would like dream about for any other type of fishing except this. Ain't nothing quite like a greasy gizzard. Drop this baby down. 46 feet of water, my goodness. That one's gonna be a floater. Oh God, it's getting hit. I just saw I just saw the noodle get smashed. Here we go. Noodle noodle just got smashed, guys. Oh my gosh. Forty-seven feet of water. Noodle got cranked. I was just starting the motor and it just goes kaplunk right under. Oh, yep, it's getting a hit. I think something might be on there now. It looks like it's moving slightly. Yep, 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 yep. Getting a little bob, getting a little movement. Yep, there it goes. It's either getting a bite or something is on there already. Oh man, I was gonna crank up and go a little shallower, but oh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're getting tugged. It's a good tug. There she blows. There she blows, baby. Let's go. Yeah, when you see the when you see the full straight up and down tug, that's good. That's a good sign. I'm just whip around, throw this other one real quick, and then we will go get whatever is on that thing. Don't come off. Stay on there. Oh yeah. No, it's Whatever's on there, it's tugging good. This is good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Right off this big point, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna come up here shallower, get two different depth positions, and then we'll get the uh, the rods and reels out. But jugs for the win, man. Look at these juicies. Oh yeah. Oh, don't get tangled. Oh yeah, definitely a fish on here. Doesn't feel tremendously huge, but uh, I can definitely feel it. Oh yeah, good blue cat, great blue cat. It's exactly what we're looking for right there, baby. Oh, come on, there we go. Yes, let's go. I know. I know, you're such a good eater. We'll just load them up in the boat when we're actually running around. We'll let him swim around under the boat. Let's see, I think he ate a head. I think that's what he got. We'll go ahead and rebate. Throw it right back out there. Nice bloody head for you. These actually had the, uh, the floats on them as well floats just help it keep from getting tangled. 
There we go. Bombs away. It's like I was saying this morning, I thought the shad would be really deep. And now that I've come out here close to the main creek channel, there's just lots of shad out here in deep water. And they're kind of topping out at 30 foot. My um, jugs right now are probably around 30 feet. They're smelly and they're delicious. These catfish are just coming up and then grabbing them. Look at that shad wad and just look at the creatures living around it. That's what we need right there. I think I'm gonna set out some lines here. I was slightly drifting back this way. So we'll be able to put some rods and then keep an eye out on our jugs. Because we have no wind, great day to take out the crispy collector with no wind. I can rip it 25 mile an hour. Just give her hell. But the, the rigs that I set up for drifting, I don't think are very efficient. I think they're gonna get tangled because they're basically just sitting under the boat right now. So I think I'm gonna re-rig and I'm just gonna do something, maybe even a suspended kind of deal. Sort of like the jugs, just put uh, you know, a barrel weight on there or something, possibly put a float and just throw a hook down there. Simplest form of fishing. We've, we've got the great bait and we are on the fish. Uh, it's just cr getting it in the right depth, presentation, all of that stuff. Oh, we're getting a bite, we're getting a bite, we're getting a bite, we're getting a bite. Might have taken our bait. Oh, I think I feel it. Yep, we're on, baby. <sighs> Little blue. Little blue on the rig. Rotten reel. Golly, look at that. You think he's been eating some shad? think so tasty little dude there yes, sir just rigging up my second rod and that one went off that dude has got a lock jaw there we go it's like I don't want to be a golden crispy that's too dang bad Delicious blues. Chicken of the lake. <clears throat> Look at that nice touch on the crispy Guggen Squad towel right there. Gotta love it. Taking a one ounce, one ounce sinker. And I'm sticking it on. I mean, this is basically just a big Carolina rig. Some, some people call this a Santee rig. It's got a float on it. And I think this is definitely the better move with no wind. I'm using this circle hook so I don't really have to get after the fish right away. They're pretty much going to hook themselves. Sort of a big piece of bait. Yeah, we'll throw it out there and see what happens. Not a whole lot on the scanners at this moment, but oh, there goes my bait right there. Looks like there's something on the bottom. So I'm basically letting it hit the bottom, come up a few cranks, and we're sticking it in the holder. So I've got my little cork on there to give it some, uh, some float action. That's about all there is to it, guys. Hey, we got two on the stringer. That's awesome. I'm looking for a, a big one, a real big one, but I'll take some eaters for sure. Lines are reset and we got fresh bait. To kind of set up the small wind that we do have right here, I'm gonna be drifting out into deeper water from the shallower area going out across this flat. And I started in about 35. I'm not fishing it on the bottom. I'm fishing it, you know, probably five, six, ten feet off the bottom. And they can smell it. They can smell it just fine. As long as it's not going too fast, that where they can, and they're saying, oh, that's an easy meal, then, it, then it's not a problem. If the wind was really kicking and I was going fast, then it'd be a, 
an issue. Definitely marked quite a few fish. You can still see the, the shad. That one's going, ladies and gentlemen. We are on. He's dug it. It's not a giant, but he's on there. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? Oh, this is kind of awkward. I got this thing in the back of my boat. But... All right, just keep in mind, I got this circle hook on here. So we just kind of take her easy. Oh, it's getting a little heavier now. Definitely gotten a little heavier. I'm hoping it doesn't cross my other line. Nope, it did not. Good blue cat. Come here, buddy. Let me grab that 50 pound leader and sling you in. There we go. Just a juicy. A juicy pie. Just an absolute shad getter, man. That was on the fresh bait, too. I just put a fresh piece on there. That might make the difference. He's definitely under 20. He's about 18, 19. He's on. All right, let's get it back out here. All right, so I'm just gonna let this go to the bottom. It's only 28 feet right here. And I'm only gonna do a couple of cranks because we're probably gonna end up in some deeper water as we're drifting. Look at that shad guts. Fresh gizzards, man. I think that just makes the difference. Drifting at 0.36 miles an hour. That's nice. Controlled drift right here. this way back that up the old paddle you know I could do this blindly in the in the crispy collector and probably catch some but oh my gosh having the electronics uh, I feel like this boat is complete now just picked everything up I just want to try another area just to kind of see I love how much how the bait that I'm seeing right here I'll, I might just come back to it but I just want to see something different you know see if there's anything that I'm missing who's ready to eat shad filet tell me that doesn't look nice all right float on as the song says the spot that I moved to it's uh it's where a creek uh, a creek dumps out like a small creek not the not the major river channel dumps out in about 30 feet of water into the the big big waters and uh, I just thought it looked pretty good saw some marks but it's, you know two major major structure things meeting just look just look good man just look nice all right be free catch them Catch them up. You can see my two baits and my weight right there, sitting above that fish in 30 feet of water. We might just cut it right here and do a little rod drifting. All right, we'll give this about uh, 10, 20 minutes, see what we come up with, and then uh, we'll either move to a different spot or go back to that big point where I know there's some cats moving around. We're getting to, oh, we're double tugging. We're double tugging right here, guys. I don't know if they're tangled up or I've got. Oh, I'm doubled up. I'm doubled up, baby. Come here, son. Oh yeah. This one is. This one is just. Oh no, they're tangled. Try to get this guy landed. Uh, D hooker, get him off the line. Oh, buddy, what do we got here? We got the old tangaroo big time. Oh boy, there you go. Logic would say we're probably tangled. 
I don't feel anything too crazy on here, so. All right, that one's out. Just for safety, let's see. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, we did not have a fish one. All right, we got one, two, three, four catfish. I just reeled up. Made my way out to the main river channel from 25 all the way out to 50 feet. Didn't get a bite. So we're gonna go check our jugs now, see if we got anything on those. I'm gonna suspect, well, I don't know. Never know what to, what to think on these jugs. Sometimes they're moving, sometimes they're not. Oh, yep. Oh, no. Wait, yep. I feel something. I feel something on here. Uh, it feels decent, actually. Oh, yeah. Big one. Big one. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Come here, buddy. Let me grab you. How good are you hooked? This is a big one. Yeah, there we go, guys. Look at that one. Holy smokes. Look at that blue catfish right there. That's a delicious eater. I want to know how big he is. He might be over the 30. God, I can barely get my hands on him. I don't think he's quite 30, but he's definitely over the 20. Looks like he's about 24, 25. That is a mega. <laughs> oh. It's not really a mega as far as blue cats go. I should take that back, but it is a dandy. All right, I'm going to leave you right there for a second, buddy. You are so much bigger than the other ones. That was a good one out there in 25 feet of water. Let's go check our other one. Uh, it doesn't feel like anything's on this one. One of them performed though. Look at that bag of catfish. Come on, guys. That's ah, good eating right there. catfish right here in this zone I'm gonna set up my drift and try to get some of these it's cold out here y'all setting up the last drift of the day right here hoping to get one more came up in about 20 feet of water we're gonna drift out to around 30 saw just lots of shad up on this point and we're going 0.33 miles an hour right now. Perfect little drift. Fresh baits, two lines out. And I've got tons of gizzard chat to take home that I'm gonna reuse for later. We'll uh, put those in some uh, vacuum seals. Gizzard dead for good luck. It's actually one of my baits right there. This is full crispy mode right here, y'all. Two poles, chair flipped around, kicking the feet up. Just waiting for them to bend. Oh, that one's going, that one's going. Come here, baby, come here, baby. Oh, that one feels good. Ah, uh, yeah. Definitely a catfish. Catfish is dancing. Come here, sugar plum. There you are. Good one. Oh, yes. Perfectly hooked. That one didn't give up on me. It came back. Yes, sir. Ah. Yeah, baby. Look at that. It's got mud on it. It's been down there on the bottom. Isn't that crazy, guys? 
sitting down there below that monster ball of shad. We are in the hot zone right now. Just gotta keep it, keep the dangle going. I'm surprised this other one didn't go off. I think my bait got taken on it. That's a good one. All right, this is our third one over 20. Can only keep five. No, that might be our last one of the day, but it sure is a good one. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he tugs, don't let him go. Let's catch a big old catfish. Oh, I'm getting a bite. I literally just got a bite. The nursery rhyme. Oh my gosh, he's taking it. He's taking it. He's taking it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, baby. Here we go. Take it. Take it. Golly. It started just to bend down heavily. Dad coming. Got that circle on here, circle hook, so you just gotta let him, let him do the deal. God, I thought that was gonna be a big, I cannot believe that little nursery rhyme worked. Got some fish right here too. We are on some fish. Oh shoot, this one's, this one's going, this one's taking off. Oh yeah, oh biggin. Oh no, he came off, oh my gosh. That one felt big. No. Come back. Oh, I thought it was stuck on the bottom for a second. That one had that big slow bend on it. Jeez. Look at this stringer of catfish, guys. Oh, they're so heavy I can barely pick them up. Yes, sir. A couple of whoppers in there. This has definitely been one of my more memorable catfishing days. Been wanting to do this drifting thing for a while. It's, it's a pretty good time to do it in the winter. And when the water's 41 degrees, you know, bass fishing is really tough. Crappie fishing can be tough. But these bigger blue catfish, they do come around. And I'm, I'm still looking for old Sally. Oh, big, big, big one. And I wouldn't keep one that big. I'd, I'd throw it back. But these are great eaters, and I cannot wait to make some golden crispies out of them. And the crispy collector, she performed today, y'all. The new new eyeballs, the new graph, whole system. I just love it, man. This thing is just dialed in, ready to go now. Don't forget to go check out googansquad.com. Go check out the, the new deck boots, the rubbers and the gray topo, they're available, uh, and all the other new stuff that, that's coming out. We got. We got nice little Easter egg nuggets just bouncing around throughout this year, so you guys stay tuned. Don't forget to use my promo code LFG. I had a little crop, slight crappie distraction today. I think I can come back here and get some crappie, but you guys stay tuned for all the outdoor adventures. Smash that like button for big cats. I'll see you on the next one.